Hello everyone, in this video we will see the digital I.O. property of the MSP430 Launchpad starting with the port registers and then we will see how to use the ports as output and control LEDs and by the help of a simple circuit we will test the input property of the ports. First, let's take a look at the most commonly used digital I.O. port registers. PX3 register is used for setting a pin direction as input or output. PX in register keeps the values of the input ports. PX out register is used for setting an output pin as 0 or 1. PX ran registers are used for enabling internal pull up pull down resistors. In case it's enabled, pull up pull down selection is done by setting or resetting the related PX out register bit respectively. PXL and PXL2 registers are used for selecting the purpose of the port and pin. For digital I.O., the related bit in the PXL and PXL2 should be zero. Now let's see the details of the PX3 register. PX3 register is used for setting the direction of a pin either as input or output. It's an 8-bit register. Actually, all the port registers that we are mentioning here will be 8-bit registers. To set a pin as output, the corresponding bit should be set to 1. To set a pin as input, the corresponding bit should be set to 0. Let's see some examples in C code. P1 dir is equal to 0, 1. This sets the P1.0 port as output. P1 dir is equal to 0, 2 sets the P11 port as output. P2 dir equals 4, 2 hexadecimal. This sets the P2.1 and P2.6 as output. Let's see the binary representation of these hexadecimal numbers. For example, P2 dir is equal to 4, 2 hexadecimal is shown here in binary. So we can see that all these bits are corresponding to these values, meaning that 0 corresponding to px.0, 1 is corresponding to px.1, and etc. and etc. So in this example, if you map these bits, 1 is corresponding to px.1, and this one bit is corresponding to px.6. This means that in this case, p2.1 and p2.6 are set as output. You should notice that all other ports are set as input, like p2.0, p2.2, p2.3, 2.4, 2.5, and 2.7. Now we will see the px in register in the next slide. Px in registers contain the input values of the pins. In our previous example, we had defined output and input ports by p2 dir is equal to 4 to hexadecimal and this was setting the p2.1 and p2.6 as output and the rest of the ports as input. If you would like to get the value for a specific input pin, for example p2.2, we need to use the AND logic operation with the p2 in register and this binary mask. So the command in C language it will be p2.in and hexadecimal 04 and the result of this operation will be 1 in case p2.2 is equal to 1, or it's going to be 0 if p2.2 is equal to 0. The last port register that we'll discuss is the px out register. To set the values of the output pins, px out register is used. In our example, we had defined output and input ports by p2 there is equal to 4 to hexadecimal. This was setting the p2.1, p2.6 as output and the rest of the ports as input. If you would like to set the value for a specific pin, for example, p2.1 as 0 and p2.6 as high, 1 in our example, we should use the following command. p2 out is equal to 40 hexadecimal. This corresponds to this value in binary. So let's see which bit it corresponds to. We can see that this one bit is corresponding to px.6. So it's going to set this pin's output to 1. Now let's open Code Composer Studio and use this information for controlling LEDs. In Code Composer Studio, I created a new project and have written the following code. In the first line, the MSP430 library is included. This is done automatically by Code Composer Studio as you create the project because we had already selected our board type in the setup. In the main function, the first line disables the watchdog timer. This is also done automatically by Code Composer Studio. On line 6, we are setting the P1 their registers first bit to 1, meaning that P1.0 pin will be output 
and the rest of the pins of the P1 port will be input. On line 7, we set the output value of all the pins, including P1.0 to 0. You can think of this as an initial state. Actually, line 8 is optional here. I just wanted to show you an example of the usage of PXRAN register, which is used for enabling the pull-up, pull-down resistors. Here, with this command, they are all disabled. In the while one loop, which is an infinite loop, we set the value of P1 out register to 1. This means that the output pin P1.0 will have high output, so we'll expect the onboard LED to be on. Now let's run the code and observe the output. Let's click on debug. Proceed. And now let's click on resume. You can see that our onboard LED, green LED, is on. Now let's change the code to make it off. Let's change the P1 out register's value to 0 and save and debug once again. and click on resume. You can see that the LED is in off state. Now let's enhance the code to blink the LED. Here I'm using the XOR operator to XOR the P1 out register with the value 1. Remember the truth table of XOR logic operation. In case the two inputs are different, the output will be 1. In case both inputs are the same, the output will be 0. This gives us the toggle property, meaning that if the previous value of our P1.0 output port is 0, then it will be 1, and then it will be 0, and so on and so on. This will create a blink effect in the onboard LED. Let's run the code and see if the LED is blinking. Let's click on resume. Now we are observing that the LED is not blinking, but it's on all the time, right? Actually, it's not right. The LED is blinking. However, it's blinking about a million times a second, so it's impossible for the human eye to catch the on-off states of it. That's why we see it as if it's constantly on. So in order to see the blink properly, we'll set a delay between the on and the off states with the following command. Let's go to the editor and let's add this line. Delay cycles and save. Here, since the default clock speed is 1 MHz, a delay of 500,000 cycles means a delay of half a second. Now let's run the code and observe the LED on the launchpad. Let's click on resume. And we can see that the LED is blinking remember that the green LED that is blinking is connected to P1.0 pin this means that we can get the same output from that pin let's connect this pin to an external LED on the breadboard first I'm going to connect this ground to a ground on the launch pad and then I'm going to 
connect this to P1.0. Okay. Now you can see that both LEDs are blinking synchronously. Now let's create the simple circuit to test the digital input for MSP4 under than 30. We are going to get the power supply from the 3.3 volts pin and we are going to use four resistors in series and three of them will be 330 ohms and the last one will be 470 ohms. If you use ohms law, you are going to see that the current that's flowing through the circuit is 2.2 milliamps and the node voltages will be, this one will be 3.3 for sure and this node will be around 2.5, this one will be around 1.8 and this node will be around 1 volts. Now let's open Code Composer Studio and use this circuit with our launch pad. In this example, we are going to use the P1.4 pin as input and see if the pin is correctly read by our microcontroller. For this, we will use the voltage divider circuit that we have just shown and connect P1.4 pin to all four nodes of the circuit to check if the value is observed correctly. If the value is read as high, the onboard LED at P1.0 will be on. If the value is read as low, the LED will be off. And you can see that we already formed our voltage divider circuit here. We've got three 330 ohms and we've got 470 ohms serially connected. And we are getting the 3.3 volts from the launch pad and we are getting the ground from the launch pad as well. And we are going to use P1.4 pin to check the input values. Now let's debug the code. And run it by clicking on resume. Now let's connect first to ground. You can see that the LED is off. And in the first node, we again see that we have low input. In the next node, we get high input. And in this node, we again have high input. And at 3.3 volts, for sure we are having a high input as well. This was the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Bye.